The trait of being dependable and credible has benefits that go a long way. However, some of us have a difficult time with this trait. In this video, I'll be helping you with how to become a credible and dependable person with field tips that you can follow. My name is Fawn Peter and right here on this channel, I share tips and lessons that I have used to make my life better and happier in the hopes that I can help you too. First of all, credibility is the quality of being believable and trustworthy. It's a state in which the people around you can believe in you, rely on you, trust you and take your word seriously. In order to become a more credible person and dependable person, here are a few tips. Number one, under promise, over deliver. We've heard this a million times and it is very, very effective. If you're going to be done with a task by Wednesday, most definitely give a period of time that stretches till Friday or maybe Saturday. And if that person expects a job done by Friday or Saturday and you deliver by Wednesday, your word is worthy of being respected. And at that point, you become a credible and dependable person. And even more because you delivered your job early, learn to under promise. So at the end of the day, when you deliver, you end up delivering more more than you promised. If you think you're going to be able to give somebody 50,000 Naira, promise the person 30 or 20 just to be on the safe side. And when you end up giving the person 50,000 Naira, it goes a long way. It means even more than your initial promise at the end of the day. Now, some people may think that when you under promise, it just means you're undermining yourself or expecting yourself to fail. No, instead, it means that in life, there are unforeseen circumstances. There are things that could happen and you're just preparing for that so just in case you fall short it's just a way of making sure you don't promise higher and then deliver here so it's better to under promise and over deliver rather than over promise and under deliver it makes people see you as someone who promises and delivers and does even more than he or she delivers and it is definitely a weapon in your arsenal number two calculate if you want to make a promise, you want to get a job done, you want to get a task done, you want to give something to someone, whatever promises you're making, make your calculations properly and correctly. Analyze properly. If I think I'm going to come visit you in the next one hour, questions are, have I had my bath? Am I going to put on makeup? Do I have what I'm going to wear? How do I get there? Where do I pick a bus? Am I using a private taxi? How am I going to get there? Will there be traffic on the road? Will there not be traffic on the road? Is there something else I have to do before I get there? So I want to visit you in the next one hour and I think I'll be there but when I take all these things into consideration I may likely not be there so what do I do I'll come visit you in the next three hours four hours five hours and just maybe all these things don't come into play and I end up coming in the next one hour or in the next two hours obviously I'd have to tell you oh I'm coming earlier than I thought I would but it pays to make your calculations make your analysis properly calculate the time you would likely spend doing that thing calculate the things it takes calculate your capabilities calculate what you think you can do how you think you can do it just make your calculations properly before you make a promise or before you say something before you say you're going to do or be something to someone calculate properly and never forget the unforeseen circumstances in your calculations the rain may start anything may start anything may happen so never forget the unforeseen circumstances don't be the person that makes excuses that oh i didn't know what's gonna happen oh i didn't know this was going to happen this is not to say that you'll definitely know and predict the things that are going to happen no it just means you keep a reserve of time you keep um a certain amount of time that would allow you work out anything that happens anything that comes into play so that even if you get there later or even if you under deliver it won't be so far off the mark so learn to make your calculations properly and never forget the unforeseen circumstances and the miscellaneous number three be disciplined after all the plans all the calculations under promising hoping to over deliver if you cannot discipline yourself to do what you need to do when you need to do it you'll most likely still not deliver I can decide that I'm going to be at your place by 5 p.m. What is it going to take? I'm going to have to get ready, get dressed, do my chores, get everything ready, and probably be on the road by 4 or 4.30 4 p.m., maybe 4 to be safer. What do I do? I have to wake up early and get everything done and make sure that by 4.30 I am dressed and on the road. And for me to be dressed and on the road by 4.30, I should have had my bath by 3, by 3.30, by 4, depending on if I'm putting makeup on or not. And sometimes we tend to be lazy, especially if it's an informal 
occasion. We tend to be lazy. We tend to take our time. We tend to get out of bed later than we should get out of bed. And at the end of the day, we are lagging behind time. So learn to discipline yourself to do what you're meant to do, even if it's formal or informal, just so that you can be a person that delivers on his or her word or over delivers and not under deliver. Discipline is key to everything. And if you're not a disciplined human being, you almost cannot even do anything at all. You'd still need discipline to apply the tips that I'm giving to you right now. Learn to be disciplined, to get up and do what you need to do when you need to do it for the results that you need to get. Number four, forsake sentiment. Sentiment are a beautiful thing in life and sentiments are very emotionally packed. We tend to feel a certain way for certain reasons or at a certain time at a certain place for whatever reasons we may feel these things and sometimes they are all about sentiment. So even if I go late to work or I feel like I may be going late to work or whatever, I feel like I should be forgiven because the rain fell. I feel like I should be forgiven because I'm sick. I feel like I should be forgiven because I did a great job yesterday. These are valid. And definitely reasons why a person should be forgiven. But when you believe in sentiment and write on sentiment and dwell on sentiment, these things begin to happen more often. So you go to work later more often. You, you default on what you're supposed to deliver more often because you feel, oh, I was sick or oh, I was this. There's always something in life that can excuse you from a job or from a duty or from delivering on your word. So if you have a mentality in which you dwell on sentiment a lot, it will make you fall back. It will make you falter on so many promises, so many jobs, so many duties, so many things that you're meant to deliver or over deliver on. So take away sentiment, learn to forget sentiment and just keep them aside. Apply your logic, apply your integrity, apply your worth and make sure that I'm going to deliver on this no matter the sentiment. And if you end up delivering on something regardless of the sentiment, it even makes people more sentimental about it. Because they tend to feel, oh, he or she delivered on this even though he or she was sick. That's very impressive. I respect you. I like this. I want to give you more jobs. I want to give you a promotion. He's able to keep going and going even when he doesn't feel like it. Now, I'm not saying you should kill yourself because of a promise you made. No. There are times when your sentiments have to come in. Or it's not even sentiments. It's just simple logic and self-care. I cannot do this. I cannot deliver on this because of this reason. But it has to be a really valid reason. It has to be be something that could not be avoided so stop using excuses stop creating excuses stop using circumstances of life as excuses to fall back on your promises and under deliver forsake sentiment number five honesty you have to be honest with yourself can I do this is it possible for me to get this task done is it possible for me to give you what I'm offering is it possible for me to deliver on this? Is it possible for me to be the person you want me to be? Is it possible for me not to do the things that... Is it possible? Am I being real? Am I being honest with myself? Can I do this? If you're honest with yourself and you know you cannot do something, you just simply say no. Or you simply warn the person, I'll probably make it in this amount of time. But I have to warn you, this is possible and this may happen. Because you're honest with yourself and with the person. You're not lying to yourself and you're not lying to the person. That person knows what to expect knows what to look forward to, knows the arrangements to make, knows if he or she should step out even though you said you're coming or if he or she should not step out. Be honest with yourself first of all because if you're not honest with yourself, you cannot know the things you need to do. You can't make your calculations properly. You will not be able to under promise even though you know that you're probably not going to get this done. You'll still over promise because you're not being honest with yourself. You can't calculate. You can't take the time to sit down to do what you're meant to do. You can't discipline yourself because you keep telling yourself that oh I'll get out of bed oh I'm going to do this oh but I was really sick yeah I couldn't do what I should have done even though there will always be reasons and if you're not honest enough with yourself to tell yourself that look I need to sit up you most likely will never get there you'll never be a credible person or someone that people can depend on be honest enough with yourself to tell yourself that my word is not worthy of anything people don't respect me people don't find me credible people don't find me dependable if you still choose to believe otherwise then you'll never think there's a reason to make a difference there's a reason to do anything about it and you'll just keep on being a person who is not credible and who's not dependable who people cannot rely on or trust but you'll still keep telling yourself that that's not true and you'll blame everyone Every other person aside from yourself so be honest with yourself number six value your word your word is your worth. 
If your word is worth nothing, you are worth nothing. Be honest with yourself enough to tell yourself this, but always remind yourself that I have to value my word. I have to value my word. I have to make my word valuable. My word has to be worth something. My word is me. And if it is worth nothing, I am worth nothing. If I tell someone I am an honest person, oh, shh. if I tell someone I am a nice person, oh, shh. if I tell someone I'm a hardworking person, oh, shh. if I say I'm going to do this, oh, okay, yeah, all right, we hope we'll see. People do not trust you. People do not rely on you. People think you're a joke. You say something and your, your friend goes, oh, yeah, okay, never mind. People cannot take you seriously. How then can you take yourself seriously? How can you achieve greater things in life when people cannot even listen to you and take you seriously? So learn to place value on your word. Make sure your word is worth the world. And before you say something, before you give a promise, before you make a statement, before you say, I am this or I will do this or this is the case, make sure that that is probably 70 to 80 or probably even 90% accurate and it will work that way. And make sure you confirm things before you tell someone, this is what happened here, this is the case and this is what happened. Make sure your facts are right. Confirm them. Do not just say things based on sentiment, based on how you feel, based on the likelihood. If you're saying something based on a likelihood or a speculation, make sure it is clear enough. This is not a certainty or a fact. I'm speculating. It is a likely occurrence. It is a likely truth. That way people get to understand that this is just a postulation of what you think. This is your opinion and it's something that could very possibly be untrue. That is still credible. Oh, he said this, but he also said it's probably wrong. So even if it turns out to be wrong or oh, no harm done, learn to value your word. And before you say something to someone for a fact and ride on it and put your integrity on it make sure you confirm it and if you cannot confirm it you either do not say it or make sure state very clearly that it is speculation or it may not be true with these tips slowly you become a credible person to the people around you they get to learn that they can trust your word they can depend on you if you say something it's most likely true if you say you're going to do something he or she will most likely do it if he says he is something well that's probably true that way you're a credible person to the people around you and trust me credibility will open doors for you it can get you leadership positions it can get you promotions it can get you so many things trust and so much more so these are the tips that i use for my own self and trust me it has done a great deal for me if you have more tips please let me know in the comment section below you can also subscribe to this channel if you like the content here hit the notification button to be the first to know when a new video is up every week you can like and share to your friends and family and for more similar content from me check out my podcast the fix podcast up on google and apple Podcasts. i'll see you next week